They give you a translation and they say to you, you can trust the translation. So they're happy to give it to you if you're gullible, but if you're a critical thinker, suddenly it's not trustworthy. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't quote 35 seconds of, of monologue. Wow, I must be a moron. No, no. <laughs> your words, bro, your words, not mine, your words. Right? Okay, fine then, I'm an idiot. Correct Again, me your I'm words, wrong. not mine. <laughs> Did Muhammad communicate multiple ways to perform Salah or one way to perform Salah? One way, but... One way. One way. So who's but right, the Sunni or the Shia? The thing is... The biblical test? Yes. yes. Take your pick. What is you the biblical test? You can't go to the previously aforementioned screens and say that the biblical texts are the source of your religion. Which one are they? In something as basic as Salah, as basic as prayer, there are two forms, which means that the tradition of the Prophet was not properly preserved. When Jesus came, he told stories to people. They didn't understand it. So it's a parable. He has to tell. Okay, that's a bad example. It wasn't a parable what he said, obviously. But it weren't in reference to like obviously a bowl. He's not going to say there's a bowl and the camel just pissed in it. It's drinking water because that wouldn't be contaminated. He meant they're talking about a river and not a pond. You know, like a little small pond. It's not even that. Yeah? But if you've got a river flowing and I was there peeing in it, okay. If you're next to me, then obviously you're going to get that back your butt. If you're on the other side, it's not contempt, that's still clean water to drink, do you know what I mean? So that's what you meant. That's okay, what I want to say. reply? Oh, because oh, you, 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 hey, it's not on. Hey, it's not on. You've mixed up two hadiths there. Right. You've got the hadiths about the, the well. And like yes, the well in oh, like don't worry. near Medina. It's, game. it's, game, it's still a stream. One, no, no, one second. No, no, one second. One second. So you've got the well in Medina, and then you've got the, the camel piss and uh, camel milk. So, the camel milk and the camel urine, Muhammad is saying, do this as a cure to your stomach ailments. Which is separate from the hadith that talks about going to the well and performing your ablutions in a well that there's rotting dogs, menstrual towels, and human uh, and human feces. Right, so you, you, you can't, well, no, wait, hold on, you're confusing two things. No, I just want to make one point. You know the people at the time of Muhammad, before anyone wrote down, say you're Muhammad, before he, say he's the first follower, I think it was his uh, nephew, the guy that, it was Khadija obviously, and then there was the guy that said the first verse to the small people, said he had six or five. Now you have to understand, the people around him hated him for what he was trying to change and how he was getting a gathering. People that were high in power were following him, giving all their wealth. So they were, these people, when Muhammad died, you've got to understand, you've got the Quran. Right? This is why I was like saying, we're in the Quran. And you have a lot of people saying to you, we're in the Quran. Because the Quran is tough. It can be interpreted incorrectly. There's nothing in there will say anything about drinking camel tears or anything about the age of the prophet's wife, anything like that. But then you have these hadiths of people saying they wrote it down. Now, these people that wrote things down, they're human. What? They're not prophets. Muhammad was a prophet. Even he, like Jesus, was tested by this. He said that. By mistake, I'll tell you something, but I'll tell you something. And then they all, in that moment, because he decided, the devil came and used that and, said, and sounded like the angel Gabriel. So the angel Gabriel came down after why didn't God put the angel gave before that happened? Because God wants, it has to happen, the devil has to test the prophet. So when the angel came down and gave him a new verse, these people that saw this, they first were excited that they were following the, the faith of the gods. Then now the angel gave the true ones come down and said, no, these are names of you, your gods, and God can take a verse and change it. With email, you know it. But the point I'm trying to make is, now Muhammad died, you've got Abu Bakr, 
Uthman Ali, uh, Umar Uthman and Ali. None of them married a six-year-old or shagged a nine-year-old. None of them have even had wives that age. Think about that for a second. You've got one hadith, one hadith, one hadith that says about the age. Now you have to understand, why have, have they kept this hadith there? Do you know how we Muslims are saying this is okay, not... Sorry, can I reply? Because you're the, going the, on Okay, the no, point, no, no, let me make the point. Can I make the point? Right, can make, I, well, make the point then. The point is, he had many people that hate him, that hate him. You know, like on YouTube, you've got people... No, make your point, bro. Don't they just wrote these hadiths and, and they've put them in the collection. These people that have founded that Bukhari Muslim, yes, they're sincere people, and they've said this person is a sincere person who wrote the hadith, but I believe this person who wrote the hadith made a mistake. In right, some so of allow me to reply, because... Not trustworthy. Because, because, not trustworthy. Because no, it goes against the Quran. Let, let me reply. It goes against the Quran. Let me reply, no, because, no, no. because the, the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, I, I, I don't blame you for being embarrassed by these hadiths. I'm not embarrassed. They are embarrassing. I'm and, not embarrassed and, by and, and the, the, the reality is that Sahih al-Bukhari and the science of hadith say that uh, the, uh, have, have made a number of these hadiths sahih. If they're sahih, they're considered to be trustworthy. That's the that's so about the age of Aisha. That's a trustworthy. Why hadith. don't? Why? One second. One second. Right. Which so one second. Which country what, did, right, did I interrupt you? No, you no, right. So don't interrupt me. Thank you. So it's sahih. It means it's trustworthy. So that means, as far as the Muslim ulama is concerned, Muhammad did do it. So he did have sex with a nine-year-old girl. We used the word sex. Consummated the marriage. No, 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 that's no. sex. No, one word. second. Again, you're interrupting, and yet you'll be the first to come play. We have to understand. No, no, no. Let me finish, no, no, let me finish my point. Uh, yeah. And then you can yeah. yeah. Right. It, it's Sahi in the Bukhari that Muhammad told people to go and drink camel piss with milk. Okay. It's Sahi in Bukhari that Muhammad sends, sends, sends people to perform, performs their ablutions in dirty water. Now, here's the thing. If you don't trust Sahi Hadith, you need to stop being a Sunni Muslim. No, I'm not. Listen, there's no such thing. All this, this is the point. You see, you see all these Sunni preferences you said, Shia and Shia as well. This never existed in the Taliban. They were just Muslim people that surrendered and Again. believed in one God. This is it. There was only no, one not. He even told them on his last sermon, a white's not above a black, a black's not above a black. You must have read this. Let's just stick to the camel piss, Hadith. I don't believe this This was something else said by the Prophet. Sahih? I don't believe it. Right, so you are contradicting your own I don't believe it. Right, so you're... Okay, I'll say, no, I'll say like this. No, I'll say like this. Tell Just me. in case it's true, I'll say like this. I don't believe Muhammad would have said something that would not be true scientifically. Right, so you're contradicting your own scholars. No, I'm not. And Muhammad said lots what of scholars? things. I don't have a scholar. I have a Sahih who, who al-Bukhari who just, said it was no, no, Sahih. No, 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 no. Does, is it in the Quran? Are you better than Sahih al-Bukhari? No, no, no. Are you you, are, you are saying things like that. No, I'm not. But did they, were they there? First of all, they've collected hadith. So what, you're, you're he's, chucking... He's saying, I'm saying this to him. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Are you playing to the crowd? Now? I think he's Muslim. He might if he's playing to the crowd, put him on camera. Muslim. Right. I'm not, you're not on camera. I'm not on camera, right? Not right now, what? no. Have you, have you started filming? I feel you, I feel you. But the point is, bro, yeah, yeah. You, I, ac I can see you're embarrassed by what Muhammad said. I'm not embarrassed, you never said but it. Every, it did, no, according to who? Which scholar are you quoting that contradicts Bukhari, who said that the hadith was sahih? I'm going to say this to you. Which scholar? Do you, what, do you, what does sahih mean? Yeah, it, it means trustworthy. There's only the term. It's trustworthy and reliable. Even when you've got us both on camera, for some reason, his voice is more... Just get your voice to move forward. I don't even want you know, my voice to be on camera, that's the point. So what's the point of debating, bro? I did say to him, when I was speaking, didn't I say to you, I don't want to be on camera. Listen, the fact of the matter is, it's a You're Christian, you heard me. It's a sahih. Is it sahih? It's a sahih narration. You heard me. You've got to deal with it. Is it sahih? See, this is this is why I don't even care because this guy is like behind the camera. Brood, bro, you stand and heckle me. It's so so don't complain. Don't camera, right, we're not putting you on camera. Was I, did I heckle you over there? Was oh it my God. Sahi? Well, you go to him and talk to him, bro. What, you did I not wait until you finish? JC, JC, I've got this. Bob, did I, did I not right. wait until you finished? Let's let's just come. No, 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 no you interrupted me repeatedly. Excuse me, did you, the camera not come off? And you'd finish your speech. I said to you, nice speech, by the way. Yeah. And I said, not No, you did there. You did there. You did there. Yes, you did there. I did there. You did there. Okay, so then you should apologize. No, because you've heckled me in the past. You made it out. You've heckled me in the past. Look, let's not get into the personal argument. Deal with the hadith. Deal with the hadith. I'd love to. I'd love to. Go, go. All right, so we'll just do a wrap up then. I've seen you on video. No, we don't.
I've no, we don't. I've seen the videos, bro. Bro, just, just let, let his, 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 Okay, if he doesn't want to discuss, he doesn't want to discuss. The fact of the matter is. Why don't you tell that one to the same Bro, 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 bro. Okay, I'll talk, I'll talk. Yeah, yeah. Let me. The whole You, you, live by double standards. This is why I reject your religion because your religion doesn't make any sense. So you don't understand. They hated him till he broke these. No, no, no. You're saying that. Which scholar, which scholar contradicts Bukhari in saying I these hadiths are not sahih? Whatever Muhammad said in the Quran is 100% sahih. But you got to understand the people that have these uh, hadiths say sahih. Like Bukhari? Say, it's like your trust. Like Muslim? Imagine you never lied. Chat to him, bro. I'm, I'm, chat, talk to me. Chat, chat to Imagine chat you never lied. Imagine you never spoke a lie. And you said, I thought this guy said this. Bukhari It'll be sahih. But Muslim. if it goes against the Quran, it's not in the Quran. No, no, it's bro. Not You're just running away. It's not relevant. You're running away from your own literature. You know about the camel business. You're running away from your own literature. He that Bro, this is. Let me just explain this to you. Camera, Muslims, Muslims work by they, they using work Quran and, and hadiths, and you can verify this just by asking the two Muslims right next to you. Muslims work by Quran and hadiths, and they have compilers named Bukhari and Muslim, who are considered, in terms of their Sahih collection, as being trustworthy. Now the brother has come up to me because for the last two weeks I have exposed the embarrassing statements of Muhammad in terms of Muhammad said to drink camel piss with milk and he said to perform your ablutions in a well that was filled with menstrual towels, human feces and rotting dog's carcasses. That's what, he, that's what Muhammad <laughs> said. Now, I know it's embarrassing, said. I know it's embarrassing. And Muslims are embarrassed by that statement. And so what he's now come to me and done, he said, no, these aren't Muhammad's words. But which scholar agrees with that when Bukhari and Muslim were trusted by the Muslim community to compile the trustworthy hadiths? So on the one hand, I have this authority, Bukhari, that is trusted by over a billion Muslims. And then I have one Muslim in the park who has come up to me and said, no, it's not trustworthy. <laughs> and the reason why he said, no, right. it's not trustworthy right. is because he knows it's a load of rubbish and he doesn't want to believe that his prophet can talk rubbish. <laughs> so rather than deal with the fact that his prophet talks rubbish, he simply says, well, it couldn't have been Muhammad saying it. But Muslim scholars say that he did. Right, so let's talk about something in the Quran. Okay, yeah, you want to talk about fair, science fair. in the Quran? Let's talk about science in the Quran. Yeah. Quran only, Quran only. No hadith. You're a Quran only Muslim, so yeah, come yeah. and let's uh, talk about. Let's. Oh, so you're not. So which, do you trust hadiths then? Which collections, bro? Which collections have hadiths do you trust? Which collections do you trust? Which collections of hadiths do you trust? You see, he doesn't want to answer, but I'll answer for him. Because Sunni Muslims trust Muslim and Bukhari. And Bukhari quotes Muhammad as saying that Muslims were instructed to perform their ablutions in a well that had in it menstrual towels, human feces and rotting dogs carcasses. Muhammad is reported by Bukhari and Muslim to instruct his followers to go to a camel, take its milk, mix it with its urine and drink it. Of course they're embarrassed and that's why they walk away. They walk away because it's embarrassing. And he comes to me and says, well, that's not Muhammad's words. It's not Muhammad's words. He doesn't believe it's Muhammad's words because he doesn't want to believe that his prophet was speaking rubbish. And he was. But then he says, well, I only believe what the Quran says. So let's look at something that the Quran says. So I'm a Christian. Muslims in the park go around targeting Christians and attacking our faith week in and week out. Why as Christians can we not do the same and challenge them on their own book? And what I notice is that they find people who are not trained in apologetics, tourists, innocent Christians who don't study these kinds of things and then hammer them with complicated and nuanced arguments. But when Christians who've taken the time to study their books come to them and challenge them on what their book says, they always run away. Yeah. So, 
He said he believes only in the Quran. So let me show you some errors in the Quran. Ah, okay, okay. In the Quran. So, let's have a look at errors in the Quran. So, it says in the Quran, what shape is the earth, bro? Flat. I, 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 for a scientific question, I don't ask the Holy Spirit, I ask a scientist. So let's just look at it. Everyone knows, and we have known for thousands of years, that the earth is round. Round. Now if I came to you, and I said, I've got this table, it's like a carpet. Now notice he's heckling me. Notice now he's heckling me. This is exactly what we said he would do. He doesn't want to engage, he just wants to heckle. But Surah 7119 says this. Now bearing in mind, he says he believes the Quran. So I want to ask him. According to Surah 7119, and Allah has made the earth for you as a carpet. Now when I say as a carpet, what image comes into your mind? Do you imagine a round ball? No, you don't. You imagine a rug laid flat on the ground. That's what you imagine. So when Muhammad said, I have made the earth for you like a carpet, he's wrong. The Quran is scientifically wrong. And yet Muslims will challenge Christians about our Bible and yet won't answer questions about their Quran. And it doesn't just say this once, it repeats it again and again and again. In Surah 78, 6 and 7, it says, are you listening? Surah 78, 6 and 7, have we not made the earth as wide as a wide expanse and mountains as pegs? A wide expanse, not a ball, not a circle. It says in the book of Job, in the Bible, that the earth, that God has placed the circle of the earth upon nothing. The circle of the earth upon nothing. By contrast, the Quran says that the earth is a carpet, a wide expanse, and that mountains are pegs that make it secure. Mountains are the result precisely of the Earth's instability, not a cause of its stability. It is based upon the movement of Teutonic plates. The Quran repeats this again in Surah 15, 19. Once again, it says, and the Earth we have spread out like a carpet. When I say carpet, do you imagine a round ball? No, you imagine a flat shape. And ladies and gentlemen, let's not be fooled into thinking that everyone thought this back then. Because the ancient Greek philosophers were able to identify that the earth was round using nothing but their own vision. Watching ships go over the horizon, they would seem to one sight to sink. Why would ships sink? Because the earth was round. In the book of Job, in the Bible, it says the Lord has placed the circle of the earth upon nothing. The Quran is in error. It is not from God. There are errors in it. And the Quran says to me, as an inquirer, not to you Muslims, but to me as a non-believer, if this were from any other than Allah, you, as in I, the Christian, would find many errors therein. And so when I read the Quran, according to the Quranic test that Allah has given to me, 
and I find errors in the Quran, I have to conclude that the Quran is not from Allah. So, is that the only error that we have in the Quran, or does it get worse? <laughs> it gets worse. So much worse. So, in Surah 5. Now, one second, ladies and gentlemen. The Muslim heckler says to me, you cannot speak Arabic. He seems to forget that 90% of Muslims can't speak Arabic. Most Muslims can be found in Pakistan, India and Indonesia. Their native language is not Arabic. I don't believe in Arabization. I believe that my God can communicate to everyone in a universal language. If their God can't, it is because their God is deficient. He is a failure as a communicator. By contrast, we Christians believe that because God became a man and we can tell stories about this man, it is the message and not the words that are important, which means the message can be translated and God can communicate to you in any language. By contrast, Muslims believe that every word of the Quran is directly from Allah, which means you cannot translate it into another language. And they pick and choose when they want to believe their translations. When they find a gullible Westerner open to Islam, they give you a translation and they say to you, you can trust the translation. But when, as I did, you find errors, mistakes and contradictions in that Quran, that Quranic translation, suddenly they say, oh, you can't trust the translation. So they're happy to give it to you if you're gullible, but if you're a critical thinker, suddenly it's not trustworthy. Double standards. You're talking as if all Muslims are one person. And second of all, but you're criticizing Islam. You're not understanding Islam. There's a huge difference. So, he says, he says, I am speaking as if all Muslims are one person. Allow me to correct myself because that criticism is fair. I am speaking specifically of those who are carrying out Dawah, not all Muslims, and that is a fair point. But then he says, I'm reading the Quran to find errors, not its holiness. I do not find holiness in a book that teaches that I as a Christian should be made into a second class citizen. I as a Christian do not find holiness in a book that says women can be held as captives that your right hands possess and that you can have sex with. That's what the Quran says. I don't find holiness in a book that says you can marry pre-pubescent children. I don't find holiness in a book that says slay the unbelievers. I don't find holiness in a book that denigrates my belief as a Christian and misrepresents them to Muslims. I do not find holiness in a book that demands of me as an inquirer that I should not find errors in this book, but yet when I do, the fault is mine and not the author of the Quran. There is a lot of unholiness in the Quran. But will you find unholiness in Jesus Christ? You're taking the interpretation of somebody who worked for Daesh and you're saying that this is what Islam is, right? 
you're, you're not seemingly trying to understand the comprehensiveness of the Quran and the, and the proper ways in which you can interpret it. So the, the argument of the brother I, I didn't is that I am taking the logic of someone who has interpreted the Quran according to ISIS. He is wrong. I am taking the interpretation given by Abdullah Yosef Ali. He is not a member of ISIS. He was a trusted translator of the Quran. These are his words, not ISIS's words. Translated by Abdullah Yosef Ali. The name's right there on the list. So, let's look at some more errors in the Quran. More errors in a book that is supposed to be free from error. You you can ask a question in a moment. No, no. In a moment. The Quran says. The Quran says in Surah 36, 38 to 40. I'll make this point, then you can ask a question. The Quran says in Surah 36, 7, 30, 38 to 40, the sun runs its course for a period determined for him. That is the decree of him, the exalted in might, the all knowing. And the moon, we have measured for it its mansions to traverse till she returns like the old and withered lower part of a date stalk. It is not permitted to the sun to catch up the moon, nor can night outstrip the day. The Quran is saying there is no such thing as a solar eclipse. Because the moon catches up with the sun and night overtakes the day during a solar eclipse. The birds of the air go to sleep. The heat of the sun disappears and it feels as if it is night and you cannot see without a light. By every definition, this is darkness. By every definition, this is night and darkness has caught up with the day. The Quran is in error. Go on, you wanted to ask a question. The word quite possibly is an explanation, a very poetic explanation of how light comes to darkness and darkness comes to light, which shows you the interconnectedness of the world. Right? See, what, what you are doing right here is you are giving me an interpretation out of criticism rather than understanding. Right? You are cherry picking some sort of understanding in order to show the Quran is false, which is the main reason why you will win no converts today. Not today. Brother, we're winning Not converts. Tomorrow. I was speaking to a convert just two days ago. Oh, okay, okay. How many? He want, he's supposedly asking a question. I'm just waiting for him. What's your question, bro? What's your question? In the very beginning. You spoke on com about completely different topics, right? You talked about uh, pre pre marriage sex. You talked about uh, how Christians are seen as second class citizens. <coughs> And there's a third point, I can't seem to remember. How did you move from this to the sun and the, and the moon? Is that your question? There is no coherence okay. in, your, in your speech. There's no, there's no actual question that he's making. He's just making a, a series of points. He says that there's no connection between the things that I'm saying. What he seems to forget is that the reason why I talked about the unholiness of the Quran is because I started by talking about the errors in the Quran and the fact that Allah says there should be no such errors in the Quran. It challenges me to find them and I do. Now, if I find errors in the Quran, according to the Quran, it's not from Allah. And then he says, oh, you're reading the Quran to find errors 
not its holiness. And that is why I talked about the fact that the Quran says, marry prepubescent children, have sex with your female captives. I'll show you. I will. I will show you. I will show you. I will show you. Unfortunately for him, unfortunately for him, we have a better example in our Lord Jesus Christ. A man who at a time when slavery was normal did not have slaves. Bro, who you been aggressive with? He's been aggressive with me. He's, are you going to clap me? So the Muslims threatening to punish me. He's threatening to punish me. He's just done it. He's just done it. So, so, this Quran. What's wrong with this Quran? There's nothing wrong with it. No, bro. You're wrong. You need to do some more reading. We need to do some more reading. We need to do some more reading. He's just talking. He's just running his mouth. He's asking questions. Yeah, he's asking questions. These are you guys are asking questions. He's not letting us talk. You guys can't tell him to shut up because he's playing his game. You guys can. You guys can come. Bro, I'm not there. Bro, lecture him. He was the one throwing out the threats, not me. That's precisely the point. I'm sharing the point. Sir, lecture him, not me. He turned away and walked away. So, guy, he was. He just wants the world to hear him. Oh, he just wants the world to hear him threaten me. Do you see how it doesn't matter what Muslims do in the corner? Muslims will always defend them. Brother, if someone comes now you're coming up with this generalized claim about how Muslims act. No, when you it's on it. film. He threatened me. Wait, you're yeah, defending him. Yeah, you're doing, doing, doing it. You're doing it. Did you threaten him? No, I didn't threaten. I told you let us do it. You're not going to let us do it. It's on camera. Go and check it out. Go and check it out. So, so, do you believe that the sun sets in a puddle of mud? I don't. I have not an idea about Quran. Do you? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Why do you read the Quran? Why, Why do I read the Quran? Well, firstly, this isn't the Quran. It's a translation of the Quran. I can't read the Quran. The Quran's in Arabic. That's why you're so it's not a message. It's not a message. Yes, I agree. It is a problem. It's a problem that your God can't communicate to humanity and he has elevated the Arabs above everyone else. So that we all now have to go to the Arabs, apparently, to hear what God is saying. My religion is better than yours because my religion teaches yes, that no God can speak in all languages. God can communicate in all languages. Show me your proof. Does it? I have. Show me your I agree. And they don't speak Arabic. So why do Muslims keep telling us that we need to read Arabic? If you can accept Islam without reading Arabic, why can you not criticize it? If you feel that your points are strong enough to be publicly aired, I will. Do you know what Do you know that there's churches in Mecca? Do you know that there are Christians converting in Mecca? Do you know that Christians they are Christians? Christians inside Mate, Saudi Arabia. When, when the Christians it angers them to hear that fact. Underground churches. They deny it. There are underground churches inside Saudi Arabia. And they are not free as the Muslims are free in this country. They are persecuted in Saudi Arabia. They are oppressed in Saudi Arabia. We don't need to take lectures. So, do you want to ask a question? I want to make a point. In, in okay, make a point. Make a point. Take for example, the, when Christians used to rule government in the medieval ages or in the dark ages, right? If anybody wanted, if, if Jews wanted to open a synagogue, if Muslims wanted to open a mosque, they would be persecuted, they would be killed. During the times of the Prophet, the Prophet invited Christians to pray in his mosque and he let the Jews conduct their own affairs. Right? 
Where is this tolerance in Christianity? There is no tolerance. So his point was you in that book, in your, in your book, no, no, wait, in your book, is that your point? it says that any religion that doesn't see Jesus Christ as God, as the Lord and Savior, that is a religion of the Antichrist, which means Muslims, Jews, Hindus, Sikhs are all part of the religion of the Antichrist, right? So you're telling me the Quran is spreading hatred when your when your book shows us to be the antithesis of good, to be the embodiment of evil. What is your point? Come on, come on your point. So, right, here's why you're wrong, bro. Here's why you're wrong. Tell me why I'm wrong. Firstly, firstly, <laughs> Muhammad, before he died, had all Jews and Christians excluded from Saudi Arabia. Nope. Before he died. They've That's been your hadith. They've been there until that is your hadith. The Christians of Najaf were suppressed. When Muslims invaded Christian lands, you suppressed Christians and turned them into second class citizens. Would you like five Now you said to me, you said to me, where in the Quran does it say you can have sex with a female captive? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. And then we can go there. And then we can go there. No, no, you don't own this conversation. I am. I'm part of this Surah 4, 24, also prohibited are women. This is talking about women you can have sex with. Okay. Also prohibited are women already married, except those whom your right hands possess. Okay. This is talking about women that were captured in war. That is talking about having sex with slaves. You said show me where, I have shown you where. Okay. Now answer me this. Do you believe that you can capture women in war and then have sex with them? Okay. See, the, th the thing is, the thing is, what, what you're putting forward right now is the interpretation of this one guy. Okay. There are many other interpretations that show that what your right hand possesses is not actually slaves in war. Right? It says it right here. Uh, it says it right here, but this is not the Quran. This is an inter a translation. So it's an, it's a, and again and again and again. Whenever we find uh, information that is embarrassing to Muslims, they want to disown it. No, 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 that's not bad. That's what you're doing. Because it wasn't a Muslim that, it wasn't, brother, it was a Muslim that translated this. So what? So what? This is not a Christian translation. It's a Muslim translation. Bro, a Christian went up to Jews in a synagogue and killed them all. Is he a proper representation of Christianity? You can't say that this is an adequate representation. It's not up to you. Just because he's a has a label. Okay, you okay. said you said Some, you said a lot of people have different. You said it's about interpretation. Okay. Right. I don't know if you're a Sunni or a Shia. You're a Shia. Right. So the, the, I'm going to use an argument that won't work with him because you, you don't accept Sahih al Bukhari, do you? No, no, no. No. Do you accept this one, narrated by Abu Sayyid al Qudri, that while he was sitting with Allah's apostle, he said, "Oh, Allah's apostle, we get female captives as our share of booty." and we are interested in their prices, what is your opinion about coitus interruptus? Do you know what coitus interruptus is? No, coitus interruptus is to not ejaculate inside the female. It means to withdraw. It is better for you not to do it. No soul which Allah has destined to exist will surely come into existence. Sahih al-Bukhari 3, 34, 422. What's your understanding of this? Just before I continue. So, Muhammad and the war party have captured female slaves. So they've captured women, they've made them slaves, and now they're having sex with them. Yeah? And some of them are not um, ejaculating inside the female because they don't want to make them pregnant because they fear that will lower the price. So their whole understanding about what to do with these women is based upon how much they will be worth in the market. How much can we sell them for? Bearing in mind that these women have just seen their fathers, their brothers, their uncles and their sons killed in war. Are we not supposed to understand this as rape? Do you honestly think that these women voluntarily had sex with the people that killed their families? But Muhammad, Muhammad, Muhammad is saying, Muhammad is saying, Muhammad is saying, Muhammad is saying, it is better for you to ejaculate inside the women you're raping.
What is your understanding of it? I personally have never what came across this hadith. Do you believe it? I don't know. I don't know who, who the, the, the chain of uh, transmission. If I know the chain of transmission, I can tell you. It's considered it. Sahih. Okay, so what? I need to see the chain of transmission. So what? So what? So what? So what? Remember, remember that right out of the day. Yeah. No, it's true. It's a Shia. It's quite possible. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I accept that. I need to, I need to, I need to see, yeah, yeah. I need to see okay. who said what. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. I get that. For me, if I was to inter interpret this, I would think that when, when the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Do you really do that? It is better for you not to do it. It is to say that all of the things that, okay, that was said in terms of the Kreutz, in, in terms of making them captives, is all wrong. Because one of the main principles of the Prophet was to free slaves. Because, because of this very, very logical reason. You free slaves so that they can have bonds to no human on this earth except, except God. Which is the only person being. So, so your, for, your me, argument, for me, this hadith your argument, argument, is something that and, and this is what we see again and again. Muslims are embarrassed by the reports about their prophet and they want to disown them. I do not blame you. But, but, yeah, but even, even Sunnis do it, bro. Okay, even the Sunnis in the park it's disown open. these hadiths. But, right. Uh, it's, it's called Sahih open. for a reason. It's, a, it's, it's called Sahih. Sahih. I know as a Shia, you don't. Just out of interest, for the camera, just changing this topic ever so slightly. There are a lot of hadiths that as a Shia, as a Shia, why do you reject Sunni hadith? I don't necessarily reject all of the Sunni Why do you reject some of them? Because some of them have a chain of transmission wherein the people who have been transmitting the hadith is a very long line of people, yes. right? And sometimes the people within the line of transmission are, are people that I don't necessarily trust. Okay, so what you're essentially saying as a, a Shia is that you do not trust all the people that the Sunnis trust. That's not. I'm not. I'm not being. I'm not. But we, we cannot. Am I? We cannot generalize. No, no, no. I'm just because, trying to encapsulate the, your because, position. Uh, because at the same am time, I, am, I, at the same am time, I understanding it right? You're saying that I can't trust all the Sunni hadith because I don't trust all the same people that the Sunnis trust. It's not. It's not only that. It's so it is that. It's not only that. What? What else is it? <laughs> okay. If I tell you something and I ask you to tell this guy something and ask this guy something and then tell that guy something, by the time what I say goes to that guy over. There with blue blue eyes, yep. it would have been completely changed. Whether I have the, whether you had the intent to change whatever I said yep. or not. So, right? so there is this possibility of flaw. So now let me ask you this question: As a Christian, when I hear Sunnis and Shias saying, "Well, we can't agree about who we trust in the chain of Islam," no, one second, one second, one second, one second, one second, Soon, one second, bro, one second. I'm talking to him. If I I, as an outsider and I see Sunni and Shia saying well I don't agree with your chain of transmissions and then the Sunni said to the Shia well I don't agree with your chain of transmissions and you're both accusing one another of having untrustworthy chains of transmission as an outsider why should I trust any hadith at all okay. when Muslims can't agree who to believe? I'm talking to him, bro. Ah, you don't want to. Okay, okay, no, okay, because okay. I'm talking I would forward this point. There are the, the, the main fundamental principles that bind Shias and Sunnis together. But I would also like you to see the flip side. With, with Christianity, you have Orthodox, you have Anglican, you have Protestant, you have uh, Catholic. And the Bible, was the, there was an Old Testament and a New Testament, as if the Old Testament was not good enough, so you made a new one. And the you know? problem, the and, right, one and, second plus, and plus, the people who wrote the Bible, most of them never even directly met Jesus. Okay, so, so how, allow, me, allow me to reply. Yeah, allow me to reply. Bro, are you going to listen to him or do you so want to listen to my reply? Do you want to you want to multitask? Right. Yeah, then, right. Well, you're a man, I accept that you can't multitask. Every other man does. Only, you need to do that. Yeah. So, so, I, I, yeah, I, I'm not a soy boy, don't worry about it. So, as I was saying, bro. As I was saying, ah, Bob. as I was saying, yeah. so he essentially has admitted yeah. that Sunni and Shia 
can't agree on hadith. Yeah, he said that. He said that. But rather, knowledge. rather, rather than deal with the consequences of that reality, he wants to change the subject. He wants to get off the topic as quickly as he can. No, 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 and we see this all the time. Every week. Right, hold on. One second. Hold on. One second. Okay, go ahead. All Christians. All Christians believe in the fundamentals of our faith. To be a Christian, you have to believe in the Nicene Creed. If you don't believe in the Nicene Creed, you are not a Christian. Full stop. And every Christian believes in the Nicene Creed. That is our fundamental doctrine. And the Nicene Creed says nothing about the canon of Scripture at all. At all. It's not a direct equivalent. Now, one second. One second. Hadith, hadith are fundamental to your religion. They are fundamental. They are fundamental. They are fundamental. They are fundamental. Because, and I'll tell you why. Because they change the character of the five pillars. Muslim Shias and Muslim Sunnis do not perform Salat in the same way. They do not understand <laughs> he does, he does. Salat he does, in the same does, way. Does, does, does. And Sunnis do not consider the Salat that is performed in a way different to their own as being valid. And vice versa. By the last point that you made. Right. The way in which we practice our religion. The five pillars. They have right. no, keep, let's say on the prayer because let's that was the last point. Yeah, yes. That was let's the last point the prayer. that you made, right? The prayer. We may pray like this, they may pray like this, but we pray together. Right? We can pray together and it's permissible. Second of all, you talked about how Christians all believe in the fundamental principles of Christianity. Right. Explain to me why Protestants and Catholics always used to have wars. Second second of all, when it came, when it comes to Muslims, we all believe in the five pillars. We believe, we believe in, the, in, in charity, prayer, oh, and fasting, right? And we have very specific verses regarding the, the reasons why we should stick together regardless of our differences. Just, and just because, just because we disagree sometimes on, on the hadiths that are transmitted does not mean that we have more differences than similarities. So, right? let's, let's, let's just deal with that. Let's just deal with that. Because there are plenty of Sunnis in this part that would say you as a Shia are not a Muslim. Who says I'm not a Muslim? There are many. There are many Sunnis that say that. Oh, come on. Okay, where are they? Where are they? Because that'll prove my point. Wait, wait, wait. And they won't want to embarrass themselves because you're defending Islam right now. They believe it. It's on camera. There are plenty of Muslims that do that. Where? We've seen them. We've Guys, who them. says I'm a kafir? So, we've seen Ain't them. Ain't nobody bro. here. So, who's a Sunni? Who's let's, a Sunni? let's just be clear. Who's let's just Sunni? be clear. No, no answer. The, the hadiths. You can't find Muslims. anybody. We can. We can. <laughs> we can, we can we the hadiths. Okay. They say that hadiths are not fundamental. Yeah, yeah. But they are. Because unless you're going to say that the Quran stands alone, which no Muslim will, every Muslim says you understand the Quran through the hadith. So hadiths are fundamental because you cannot understand the Quran in isolation. He says I'm wrong. I'm going to prove myself right. Before you come here, show me in the Quran how you should pray. Show me in the Quran how you should pray. If you can do it just with the Quran and no hadith, show me. You should be clean. You say Quran, you should be clean. No, that's your religion, not my religion. Of course. That's your religion, not Why are you religion? talking about Muslim, Muslim if you don't know about Sarah's your religion? religion? I'm going to prove you wrong. You don't know your Sarah's religion. No, you talk about I'm going to prove you wrong. He just I'm said, you. I'm asking you now. You said you hadith are not fundamental. You said that. Yeah, he said that, he said that. Right, so show me how you perform Salat in the Quran. What are the prostrations? Show me. Wait, with me or him? I'm not talking about Salat, I'm talking about Salat. Okay, okay. So, show me in the Quran. Okay. Can you? Show me in the Quran. He, he's not answering my question. I'll ask you. Okay, you said hadiths are not fundamental. Right, show me how you perform Salat using the Quran. Can you, can you show us? I would just like to deconstruct the assumption of your argument. Okay. Show me how you're swimming in the book. The assumption of your argument is According that to the book, if how you the Quran 
is able to show us how to pray, then this makes the, the then hadiths are no, no longer fundamental, right? And that hadiths, because they show us how to pray, they are fundamental, right? But what you don't understand is religion, the basis of religion, the fundamental principles of religion have to do with our belief, which is something that is within our psychological makeup rather than in our actions, it's in the intent, okay? So by definition, by definition, the hadiths are secondary sources and not primary sources. And they are therefore not fundamental. Okay, because the way in which I carry out my salat is not fundamental. What is fundamental is my belief. Do you get what I mean? So what you're saying is you can go into a mosque and you can pray however you like, so long as your intention not, is good. Not necessarily. <laughs> ah, not necessarily. But the intention is a very important I agree. Part. In that Christianity, we have exactly the same. We have similarities. So that is fundamental. My my intent to go into the mosque and want to pray to God, not to impress everybody else because of how uh, humble I am. Right? That's fundamental. Can you go into the mosque? The way in which I carry out my Can religion, you go into the mosque and pray however you like? It has to be in line with the religion. It has, it has to be in line with the religion. I agree. That's Islamic teaching. Where do you get the form of salat from? The Quran or the Hadith? The, the Quran teaches uh, uh, orders us to pray. Correct. Do you salah, need salah salah, salah? salah. Salah. This is practical oh, worship. Salah. Practical. Do How you, you teach use us the Quran alone or the Quran according to the book? How you teach to, me to understand me. and to carry out this one of the pillars of Islam, this is Salah. Do you use Quran and Hadith or Quran alone? I'm just talking about the, the, the context of Salah. The hadith is complementary, it's not fundamental. This is what you're not getting, there's a difference. Okay, so without the Hadith, you wouldn't know how to perform Salah, that's correct. Right? Uh, we as Muslims, I think I know the angle. I think I know the angle. Right. We as Muslims wouldn't do it. Would you agree with me then? Because he's saying it's not. The hadiths are fundamental to understand Islam. No, no, no. That's a totally different question. No, it's related. No, no, but no. Now you're going to go either and everywhere. But you asked one question, then you asked a second question, which was very broad. So that, that's bit, uh, and you're that, into, okay, you're just we can it, use the example, you stick with part. the example, no, it's completely genuine. No, 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 in terms of the you example of Salah, salah. Yes, you, exactly. you ask about prayer, but then you say, is that not one of the five pillars? For religion? Is that not one of the five pillars? And aren't you, like, did Muhammad not convey a single way to pray, or did he convey multiple ways to pray? Uh, what do you mean? So, Sunni and Shia, they perform their Salah differently. Their form is different. I know that as a fact, you know it as a fact, I don't know if you know no, it as a fact. I don't, I don't understand the crux of the matter. Okay, I, I, I promise you, See, you, am I correct in understanding that Shia and there Sunni are different, perform? Yes, right. but, but that, so does, that one doesn't second. constitute a fundamental one principle second. of the one religion. One second, one second. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. Did Muhammad communicate multiple ways to perform Salah or one way to perform Salah? One way, but... One way. One way. So who's but right, the Sunni or the Shia? The thing is, the thing is <laughs> he did not say that... There are things called mustahabbat. So there, there is a, there is a way that, that you can, that you can make your prayer the baseline, the baseline, and then you can, the, the baseline of what is acceptable salat, and then you can, you, you can conduct salat in a way that makes it even more acceptable. My question to you, right? So, 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 you're not dealing with my question. I am, I am. But no, you're my not that question is specific. No, I am hearing, but he's not talking about the question I asked. I'm getting the question that I asked is Muhammad gave a way of performing salah. So whose way is correct? The Sunni or the Shia? Look, by, by engaging in such a question, I contribute to the discord between the Sunnis and the Shia. The, right? Therefore, I should, I should not answer that question because the most important thing... I would. Are you saying is, you don't know? Is the, no, is the, he didn't say that. No, no, it's not, it's not that, that's not the case. I, my, it's my opinion on how to differentiate between what I believe and other Badly. people believe. Okay? The main, the main intent is that the prayer goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to, to God, right? And if you keep in mind, the fundamental principles of our religion always talks about the intention. I, I get that. And I'm not questioning that. Which basically means... I'm not questioning that. The actions are based on... I'm not questioning that. I get okay, that. We that's have exactly the same okay. principle. Okay. 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 Yes. So, so, so I wouldn't criticize you for something that we have ourselves. So that's fundamental. Right, right. hold on. But here's but the thing. The no, 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 no. Carry out so, the no, 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 you're still fundamental. Right, you've basically said, I don't want to answer the question. No, no, he didn't say that. Yes, that is exactly what he said. No, what he said, if you were listening, 
I'm, I'm is that if I answer this question, I will add to the discord between Sunnis and Shia, so I will not answer that question. Yeah, I did not say that word. I didn't say that By engaging in such a question, I contribute to the discord between the Sunnis and the Shia. One I never bro. said that. Well, here's the, the, the people can decide at home. Here's why it matters. Leave your ignorance. Here's and, why and it matters. Embrace, okay, okay. embrace Here's why it matters. Let me explain why it matters. Here's Even why it matters. You have a camera, you like. Because Muslims go around saying, we have these wonderful religion called Islam that is founded on the Quran and we have this Quran interpreted by these hadiths and we can trust these hadiths because they are reliable, they are sahih, we know their isnad and we know the people that's in the isnad and we know what their character is and how trustworthy they are. But yet in something, in something as basic as salah, as basic as prayer, there are two forms, which means that the tradition of the Prophet was not properly preserved. One of these two groups is wrong, either the Sunni or the Shia. And that throws into question the very reliability of the tradition itself. No, not really, because That's what, what you're, you're making it as if it's a dichotomy between right and wrong, instead of seeing that it's on a spectrum of least least correct and most correct. So who's most right? correct? Sunni so or Shia? So that's a reductionist like question. Like By its very nature that question so what you're doing is diversity in the religion. There's a lot of diversity. Yeah, exactly. And you need this to be is aware what about this is the whole Islamic tradition. Mm -hmm. There is this jurisprudence, there is this whole tradition. So you must but you, example, should, you should know about for example, this whole there are seven tradition. Eight. So Shias and Sunnis, both both are part of Islamic discourse, right? You can't divide, you can't draw binaries between Shias and Sunnis. So Sunnis and Shias draw binaries. That's no, why they're killing no, one another. You're drawing no, binaries. No, no, there's not like that. Is a question. They've lived alongside each other for yeah. so long. It was, it show, that shows that you have no knowledge about politics. Don't you ever see no. that Sunnis and Shias are killing each other? So they're not of killing one another. So they're not killing one beliefs. another. You have sectarian so the entrepreneurs. So you the have city in Iraq is not being bombed by, the by Sunni terrorists. That's caused, that's caused Saudi Arabia is not bombing factors. and killing there are political millions factors. of Yemeni children. Oi, oi, listen. There are political factors behind why Sunnis may kill Shias and Shias may kill, kill Sunnis, rather than the differences in the theological beliefs. They have lived alongside each other, conscious of these differences. The division so came about through but politics, you know that. Through politics, that's what I'm saying. So who are the rightly guided caliphs? Who are the rightly guided caliphs? Yes, who are the rightly guided caliphs? What does that, this have to do what? with why Sunnis because and Shias are killing each other? Because you're saying, oh, they're killing one another for politics, not religion. Oh my God, but the party it's of the Ali, modern day politics. the party Sectarian of Ali, which is Sectarian what the Shia came from, fought the Sunnis precisely because they believe that Ali was meant to succeed Muhammad. Not for those Am I wrong? And sectarianism, if you look into politics, and they take it from our politics students, okay, sectarianism is a modern day construct that was created by external intervention into our So they didn't fight. Do you know why? Hey, do you know why Sunnis and Shias have so much differences today in Iraq? Do you want me to give you a, a history about, about You have Iraq so many differences theologically that, and in practice okay, because okay. the, Mah the so, tradition so of Muhammad okay. was not preserved. That's why you have those differences. If those theological differences were there for like thousands of years, how come they only started to kill each other since 2003? They have, you don't know history. No. You might be a politics student, but you're not a student of religion and you're listen, not a listen, student listen, of history. If you understand Shia history, and there's Sunni, always a political no. Development you, that causes the death. What happened? These conflicts. What one of okay. the biggest festivals as a Shia? What is it? You you celebrate the martyrdom of who? And who, what happened to him? He, he died fighting an oppressor. Who was the oppressor? Was he a Muslim? In, in <laughs> there you go. In label. There you in go. Label. Anybody, there you go. Hey, in you, table. Hey, hey, Do you think the Sunnis agree with you? I don't. No. They, they can disagree with me, but this has nothing to do with the present. Okay. Most of Sunni agree with me. Yeah. Uh, because the and most. Sunni agree with me. A lot of Sunnis do agree with me, and the more, if I fall into your trap. I will be falling into the trap of talking so much about history, fighting so much about history that I have no ability to fight for the future with my brothers. We okay, this is what you're trying to do. You're trying to create discord between Sunnis no, and brother. Shia. You're trying Hold to show second. that there's you a say fundamental that, ancient but hatred. But what you don't understand, what you, I never hear a Muslim like you 
correct the Dawah team yeah. who go around attacking Christians yeah. and our beliefs. Yeah. Never. never. Uh, You've never ever because, gone around. Uh, because I'm omnipresent. Because I see them no, all the time. Right? No, I'm talking about ever. In all the time that I've been here. I do. In all the time that I've been here. This guy has been here. In all the time that I've been here. Uh -huh. I've never heard Muslims go up to other Muslims and say, Why are you attacking the Christian faith? Like, do you know how hard it is? Why are you attacking them, Christian them, beliefs? Do you know how hard it is to tell them to stop? And did when, when you try to do day, that in this conversation? Yeah. When every single day. You did, didn't you? You tried to flip the conversation back onto the Bible, didn't you? Yeah. To show did you, you do that? To show you that the yeah, accusations. The accusations no, you're yeah, throwing at, at the Quran significantly are the same more nuanced than that. That's but we have a different belief to you. It's a reduction. Right, you, we have a different like, belief. So you cannot throw the same no, argument no, no, back. Yeah, yeah, we can. No, we can, you can't. Because, there are, because there are, if uh, our uh, fundamental uh, beliefs are different to your uh, fundamental uh, beliefs, a valid one second. Yeah, one second. A valid criticism of a belief, for it to be valid, must take full appreciation of the fundamentals of the paradigm that it's critiquing. Therefore. If two worldview systems have different fundamental beliefs, the criticism that you can form has to be different, otherwise it is not a valid criticism. As a Christian, one second, as a Christian, I have fundamentally different beliefs to you. Which means you cannot simply take my criticism of your religion and reverse it onto mine, because when you do so, the criticism becomes invalid. No, no, that's you have to start true. from the fundamental because premises first to make a in which Christianity has Here's my question to you. It's well, rudimentary. Well, 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 well. What is your thesis statement? Is your thesis statement that Islam is wrong or that Christianity is superior to Islam? That you believe that your religion is the religion that should be preferenced? And for a couple of reasons. The first that you outlined was that Sunni and Shiite groups are fundamentally irreconcilably different. Your state, your statement surrounded Salah, right? And you were trying to outline how those two were completely different and couldn't be agreed upon, right? That internal discord meant that coming to some sort of fundamental religious truth could not be achieved via, via Islam. And the implication, correct me if I'm wrong, from you is that Christianity can lead one to those fundamental truths. Yes or no? Answer to the question. Because there was a lot of baggage that came with the question, we need to address some of that baggage. So my fundamental thesis—yes, that's fine. My fundamental thesis is this: the Quran says to me, as a Christian, that if I find errors in that Quran, it is not from. Allah. Now I don't know if you were here at the very beginning of this conversation. Sadly not. But I started this conversation by pointing out rudimentary scientific errors in the Quran. That's where, that's what my thesis was about. It went off on a tangent because this brother accused me of reading the Quran only to find errors and not to see its holiness, which is why we went on to a different topic. But my fundamental premise is that the Quran fails its own test. It says it's free from error when it's filled with errors. And that means that according to the Quran, not me, According to our, not me, it's not from God. And if it's not from God, you should stop believing it. Now, what you do with that, as a Christian, I then posit to you the truth of the Christian faith, which is not built on a book, which is why your criticism is not valid. It is not built on a book. It is no. You see, you see, oh, characterized. And, and you have mischaracterized the Christian faith rather than engage with its fundamental but premises. Is that, but is that not the truth? Let's no, it's not the truth. Let's and that's the point. The Muslims come and they challenge Christians based upon their characterization of Christianity. But when someone who takes the time to study Islam's fundamental beliefs and criticize their fundamental beliefs, they don't want to listen. They're embarrassed by their sources. Wait, 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 he's making a point now. Do you think this conversation can proceed 
if I can show that the same critique you premise towards all of Islam by failing the Quran's own test can, be can also be applied to Christianity. Would yes. you concede that? Yes. Right? So show me what is the biblical test. But the biblical test? Yes. Take your pick. What is you the biblical test? You can't go to the previously aforementioned screens and say that the biblical texts are the source of your religion. Which one are they? Also, before you before you like criticize everyone here for attacking no, I'm not criticizing everyone here. Don't mischaracterize me. Yeah. Well, I'm, so criticizing, I'm criticizing Islam. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Not people. Not people. Let's go with that. Islam. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Because Islam is a threat to me. You are, you are criticizing me. I'm not going to stop you the him. soy boy. I'm talking about the religion. I'm not talking about the people. So you're yeah, saying exactly. I can disconnect myself okay, from my religion? Okay. Fine. 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 This is this is this is fact. Right. It doesn't Fight matter. Yourself. Right? So the next thing, so the next point, right, is you need to provide a characterization of Christianity that you believe is representative and generous. I will accept whatever it is. I think the fundamentals of reason say that you uphold the principle of charity. Give the opposition the best possible version of their argument and disprove that. Okay. Go. Ahead. So Great question, by the way. It is a great question. It is a great question. You can answer it. Yeah. So, in terms of the Christian faith, what is the test that our Lord provides? What is it that He says that you should judge the Christian faith by? Speaking of religious teachers, He speaks and says this, You shall know them by their fruits, and by their fruits you shall know them. For a good tree does not produce bitter fruit, and a bad tree does not produce good fruit, but each tree produces fruit according to its kind. So using that test, I challenge you and you, and you if you want to join them, let us compare, let us compare the life of Jesus Christ to the life of Muhammad yeah, and see which one of them yeah. is the better example for us today. By what, by what standard? That's the standard. By what standard? The problem is the problem with that with that standard you, you, is you that the question, is a metaphor. Yeah, of course. Right? You didn't even it's answer not a metaphor. Question. You just made a challenge okay. and you didn't even no, answer his question. No, it, it by definition is right because you said how shall you know those that how shall you know you can't even I'm quote paraphrasing. it. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't quote 35 seconds of, of monologue. Wow, I must be a moron. No, no, <laughs> your words, bro, your words, not mine, your words. Right? Okay, fine then, I'm an idiot. Correct Again, me your I'm words, wrong. not mine. <laughs> I don't. You really should stop insulting yourself. You do There's realize, no need to. Hey, you do realize that I don't. Why are you attacking him? He's insulting, insulting himself. I, 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 I've never I, said a I, word. I, I, no, and now you're he psycho calls himself a moron. moron. He calls himself an idiot. You're and you're blaming me. So he doesn't do you, and you're just not accepting his sarcasm. I'm trying to be nice, right? If you, if you take being nice as a concession that that person loses in a debate, then frankly, you again abandon the principle of charity and I will leave. Right? Simple as that. You can't, can't agree on that, we can't agree on anything else. That I, I agree with the fundamentals of reason and that's what I'm here for. I don't have a horse in either side of this race. I really couldn't care less if by the end of today you won this entire discussion. I couldn't care less if he won this entire discussion. I couldn't care less which I did. What I care about is getting to some sort of truth. Synthesis. Antithesis, thesis, get somewhere good. For the moment, I'm taking antithesis. Just as a thought experiment. Merely that. In that instance, let's continue from where we dropped where we dropped off when you called me in when you said that I called myself an idiot. We were talking about Jesus' characterization of who you should listen to. He takes first, you shall know an individual as to the fruits that he provides, right? Those fruits would be good or bad depending on the tree that provided them, right? That is the textbook definition of a metaphor saying that one party is akin to another party in some sort of aspect that is not internal to themselves or is not obviously factual. So, that is a metaphor. That can't be disputed. That's, that's how grammar works. If you want to take that up, take it up with the Queen. I believe it's her English, <laughs> right? So, let's continue along this. The problem with metaphors is that they are, by nature, open to interpretation. Right? That metaphor could be taken one of two ways. Way number one, right? There may be others. I haven't looked into this for three hours. Way one, 
Let's say that each person produces a consistent amount of bullshit, right? That person could be considered somebody who produces poor information and is hence a bad tree. But then a good person is someone who produces continuously good information, considered a good tree. In that instance, let's ask the question, what is a good tree? What does it mean to be spouting truth versus to be spouting falsehoods? Your fundamental test doesn't provide a way to apply the test. If you shall know it unto itself, then it is merely a sense of what is true, or a sense that this is good, or a sense that this is poor, or bullshit, or whatever you'd like to term it. So, how do you apply your metaphorical test? So, the reason, the way that we apply the metaphorical test, because literature and the use of cultural images are understood by people without further reasoning. In most contexts, if you say the president, most people's minds will simply go to the president of America. Fair enough. Why? Because in the Western world, there is a cultural resonance between the office of the president and our closest ally, the Americans. If we speak about the Queen, everyone in his mind goes to Her Majesty the Queen living in Windsor Palace. They don't go to some other Queen living in some other country. In other words, terminology and language in the way that we use it sits within a cultural milieu and that cultural milieu gives it its context. Christ said quite clearly, you shall know them by their fruits and by their fruits you shall know them and then he goes on to speak about the trees. He is speaking to a Jewish audience, a Jewish audience who are soaked in the teachings of the prophets. Yes. That means that when he is speaking in those terms, he is speaking within that paradigm that that phrase is understood. It is not taken in isolation just to mean anything you want saying because it's a metaphor, it's communicating something within a culture. Like I say, the Queen or the President. Yes, but I don't need her. I don't need to give her the qualification. The qualification is there already in the minds of the people. I'm dreadfully sorry now, about this. One second, don't interrupt. I didn't interrupt you. Fair enough. In terms of Christ's teaching, he was speaking about what was understood to his audience to be good. And what was understood to his audience to be good would be that which was defined by the prophets. That understanding of righteousness. To do unto others as you would have them do unto you. To seek your neighbor's good as if it was your own. To have a generosity of heart. To have a sense of hospitality. To have a sense of defending the weak and the oppressed. To oppose injustice and tyrants. Like the caliphs. That is the kind of justice that Jesus was talking about. Now, in terms of what was considered bad, it would be things like raping female captives, having sex with prepubescent children, oh, oppressing, <laughs> oppressing, which would also be bad. You're quite right. Sounds like a bad you're also right. quite right. You didn't add that in there, so I just thought I'd wait for Yeah, you're right. So right. please, you're people, right. Is that wrong, sure. yeah? yeah, absolutely. Say that out loud. And Mohammed having sex with a child was wrong as well. <laughs> so, into the those are the sex. things. So let's go on. Now that we understand the terms, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's go on and compare Mohammed's life to Jesus. Let's do that. Let's do I'll that. ask you as a man of reason. Yeah. Not yet. Before that, we have to look. You, you delivered several points, and I'd love to continue. But first, responses must be made. Okay. The, first thing, the first thing is that you laid out a series of things. I've got to go in 10 minutes, sorry. Okay, well that's fine. The, like most most debates take like eight minutes, like eight, two five minutes each as anyway. So we'll, we'll get somewhere. That's good. So, you talked about how the prophets had a very clear set of characteristics. 
those that you would see in the Old Testament, which is surprisingly similar to the Jew to the Jewish scripts, right? They've been changed over time, and they've been preserved to the best of their abilities in Hebrew, etc., whereas ours have been translated several times. Now here we have to ask a question, A, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I've heard it in all four of the books of, of Christ's life, right? But what about all of the passages in the description of what is considered righteous treatment of another? An eye for an eye was considered a standard law of the time. A standard law then upheld by the scriptures and by the Bible. I cannot recall the exact the exact prophet who stated it, but I know that every prophet has a dedicated book. Consequently, it stands to reason that if they argued, that if they argued, but do unto others as they would do unto you, they could not concurrently agree with an eye for an eye as any attack. That is not something I would like to do unto myself, nor would any reasonable person want that to do unto themselves. Obviously, the prophets, as you describe them, are internally contradictory. So, how do we tell a good apple from a bad apple? Or, let's go on to another one. Give me, give me another example of one of the things that you consider standard for the day. Okay, so, allow me to reply to the number of points that he's made. Firstly, I just need to correct him factually. The discourse on the Sermon of the Mount, where he says, do unto others as you do unto you, it does not appear in all four Gospels. It appears in the Synoptic Gospels, which is three. Secondly, he said that the, uh, all the prophets have a book dedicated to them. That is incorrect also. Moses has five books, and it is in the books of Moses that it talks about an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. In those books, it also says, it also says, do unto others as you would have done unto you. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. The standard of goodness that is taught in the Christian faith is that good which you desire for yourself. You aspire for your neighbor. That is Christ's teaching. No, one second, I didn't interrupt you. Now, it does not take any great wit or genius for us to understand what is in our own best interests. To have a home, to have food, clean water, clothing, the family, to be cared for when we are persecuted or oppressed. These are all things we would want for ourselves. By comparison, when Hitler came along, and he said that the Jews were vermin, by the good that we want for ourselves, we can criticize this knowing that it is not good. By comparison, when Muhammad came along and said, make the Alim al-Kitab humiliated, a subject people under your neck, under your boot, we know that that is not comparable to Christ's teaching. So we can make objective moral statements based upon comparisons of the religions. And Muhammad comes out a failure in comparison to the shining light that is Jesus Christ. By comparison, what would you offer? What is your criticism of Christ's teaching? My criticism is not of Christ's teachings because we there haven't moved go. there. We haven't moved there yet. Oh sure, I'd be glad to crit criticize Christ till the oh, sun goes down, but we don't have time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to respond directly to your to your call of do do as you would, but always try and oppose tyranny and the and the subjugation of other people. So the example we were given was the Jews in Nazi Germany, a good example of unfair oppression. As is this, in the book, in this verse, Samuel, one of the earlier leaders of Israel, orders genocide against a neighboring people. This is what the Almighty says. For those of you reading at home, Samuel 15, 3. Now go and strike Amalek and devote to destruction all that they have. Do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, child and infant, ox and sheep camel and donkey, all that they have and are. 
That is a very clear, very direct statement by Samuel, and even you can't dispute that that's, that that's a prophet, for genocide. All right, great. That is our shining tree of what is goodness. You know it as from the prophets to be good. If that is the case, then I am entirely comfortable with criticizing Christ, as you asked, because his presentation of what is good as that of the prophet in your context is deplorable. So, in reply, in reply, the brother's argument is based upon a fundamental misunderstanding of the Christian faith. Fundamental. And this is the problem we see again and again and again in the park. Because despite Mansour and Shamsi's claim that Muslims learn every day, they come to the park asking the same question every day and have done for the last 20 years. Why are you changing the subject? I'm going, don't interrupt, bro. So, in terms, in terms, in terms of this specific criticism, it is based upon a misunderstanding of our faith. Christ in the statement where he says do unto others as you should have them do unto you is in the Sermon of the Mount when he takes the Mosaic law an eye for an eye a tooth for a tooth he takes that restraint given in the Mosaic law and he takes it deeper so he says that when someone strikes you on right your right cheek turn to him your left do not, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not simply repay evil for evil. So he takes what the Mosaic law is teaching and he deepens it. And the understanding of the Jewish people was that within that law there was justice. That was the overriding concept of the Jewish law and Christ takes that deeper in their understanding he quotes Samuel but do Jews go around arguing for genocide today no 2,000 years do Christians go around arguing for genocide today no no but, what about the but, what about the but, behind the American but can we find examples of Muslims yeah. arguing oh, yeah. for genocide yeah. today? Yeah. Yes, yeah. we can. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we can. So there is a real difference in the teaching of Muhammad and Jesus. A point that the brother has not want to deal with in this entire conversation. Because it's just been read. It's because you have no legs to stand on. So let's talk. Let's talk about the Okay. Do you mind if I just? Uh, you can literally time me for like three. A challenge to any Christian is to defend your faith without that's, mentioning that's Islam. I'm not going to. I'm not going to continue if you're not here to defend yourself. That's not. This is the first time I've come. 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 This is the first time I've come here in months. I've got to go. This is important. I've got to go. This is just. I, I, have I have nothing against you. I'm not, I'm not, just you are. I'm not one of these soy boys, mate. I don't take it personally. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. You shake the hands of him, but not the Muslim. Of course. Shake hands. Just so you know. Just so you know. In England, it's polite to take off your gloves when you shake someone's hand. Sorry, it shows. It's all right. Take two, take two. In that case, absolutely. Sorry. God bless. I'm a South African plebeian. What can I say? nice to see young Thank you. Thank you. Take it. Yeah, I know. Sadly, sadly, and you just see someone Christian still believing in the Christians would have been trans people if it wasn't. Do you all in the name of the Lord? That's what starts the fight. Have a lovely afternoon. Thank you. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I just love arguing with people, and it's and and I think that trying to find something valid. Well, you edit that bit in the yeah. beginning, yeah. Yeah, I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. No, because what he had argued. Yeah. Was so, so. I believe. I believe. Same, same. Just cut it out. So, so what we what we see what we see is that. What? what oh, thank you.
Thank you, sister. Good fruit from the good tree. Thank you. Sister, so what we see and what we have seen is again and again and again, Muslims are embarrassed by their own sources and want to distance themselves from them. And I would say to those Muslims, if you find your sources embarrassing, perhaps that is telling you something about your religion that you need to think about. Because if you can't follow the example of your prophet, then perhaps you need a better prophet. You will not find any Christian in this park who is embarrassed by the teachings of Jesus or his actions. Full stop. If you can't say the same about Muhammad, perhaps you need to think again about which religion you're following. As to the guy with reason, there was a lot to say. He actually is very eloquent, a bit waffly at times, but still eloquent. In terms of the objective realities, we know within our heart, because it is natural law, what is the best interest of ourselves. It doesn't take anything but reflection to understand that. And so it is not needed to inquire, but to simply discover that which is within, in terms of understanding that good that you want for yourself. But Christ compels you to aspire for that good to your neighbor. By comparison, Muhammad does not. So I've given the Christian test. Allah fails his own test in this book. Muhammad is not a good example according to Christ's teaching. But what flaw is there in Christ? 